The Horn Pond area comprises of 550 acres of the pond, a conservation area, a mountain, woods, and a golf course. I decided to start our journey from the top of the mountain and take a grand tour of the area. If you disregard the high tension wires in the poles, this is a great view. Now the people you see walking are on the Wuben Parkway. It has been closed to motor vehicles for 25 years, so it is a great wide walking path from Sturgis Street to the water treatment plant. Now back in the 1800s, the pond was a resort area. People from Boston would come here like we would go to Maine and New Hampshire today. There were inns and plenty of boating and swimming activities on the pond. On the far side of the pond ran the Middlesex Canal. It had three sets of double locks. The canal ran from the Merrimack River to Boston in the first half of the 1800s. At one time, I thought the canal ran through the pond, but it actually ran beside it. From here, you have a great view of downtown Winchester. Looking further south, you have a great view of downtown Boston. 140 years ago, I would be standing in Winchester, but today I am in Woburn. The line used to cut across the top of the mountain, but was moved when the Woburn Reservoir was built. The Woburn Reservoir was built in 1872. Water was pumped up from the pond to fill it. It was discontinued in 1986. And now, as you can see, it is just a big hole in the ground. There are two ways to get to the top of the mountain. You can be adventurous, like this family is doing, and climb the face of the mountain. Or you can take the easier paved route by the power station and wind your way up to the top. Back in the mid-1960s, the level of the pond was raised four feet. The reason being was to create extra water pressure but it also created some flooding problems downstream in Winchester. In 1990, this dam was built to help control the flooding. We will now go to the opposite side of the pond, off of Sturgis Street. Surrounding the pond are hundreds of benches dedicated to loved ones. You may have read one of Rick Friedman's stories in the local Wuben paper. We can squeeze three minutes into 26 seconds to show a busy summer night on the causeway. This is the first of many bridges that you will cross. Oh. Yeah. Waiting for the bridge again, yeah. huh? Oh yeah, I saw you last week. Yeah, yeah we yeah. saw you over by the horses. <laughs> yeah. Are you still looking for the yellow finches? Uh, well, I saw one. Oh, there's quite a few. Yeah. As you can tell, people are very friendly here. 
And that woman was right. I did find one of those yellow finches, or golden finches, as they're really called. This lagoon and two other ponds were not here 40 years ago. They were created when the level of the pond was raised four feet. Now that little island in the back, which you believe back in the 1800s, it was big enough to hold a boathouse and a bowling alley. One of the main attractions to the pond are the swans. Here is a bachelor who was always in a hurry. Maybe he was late for a date or something. Ready for takeoff. There is a nesting pair who has been here for a few years and each year raises a family. They started out with eight eggs, but only three survived here. Let's take a few minutes to get to know the swan family. Continuing down the main trail, you come to the biggest bridge in the conservation area. It used to be a bridge over a railroad track. It was known as Kilby Bridge. When it was moved here, it was painted red. So it was known and is still known as the Red Bridge. As you can see, it's no longer red. It's been repainted and has been dedicated to Bill O'Connor. There are a number of side trails. This gentleman decides to go right. This is me doing an Alfred Hitchcock imitation. End up going left. This is the skinniest bridge in the conservation area. It connects the Fowl Brook with one of the ponds. Later on in the show, you will see a very important use for this little channel. The long path is a favorite spot for joggers. These aren't like blackmail or anything, are they? No. Nope. <laughs> Look how slow they were running. Yeah, I can make it run real fast. You may see a whole track team.
Now you go down the end of this path, you will come to a set of double bridges. Now the file work goes somewhere through Burlington into Woburn, but there's so much building that quite a bit of it is covered over now. My favorite thing to do every day was to look for a great blue heron, which I nicknamed Steady Eddie. Here is one of his favorite hideout spots, his little island in the pond. Now Eddie is a fantastic fisherman. Now just look at the beauty he caught here. You may ask, how is he going to handle this big fish? Well, first, he makes sure it's nice and clean. Well, not quite ready yet. Clean it off some more. One thing he does make sure of, he eats it head first. Those scales will get a little bit rough in his throat if he eats it the other way. After he enjoys that meal, He's ready to find another one. His legs are so long, he doesn't have to fly. Just walks through the water. Now we have some other visitors to the pond. It's the Swan family. You'll notice that the swans born earlier this spring still have their brown color. This is August, and it won't be till around October before they start to turn white and look more like their parents. As soon as they saw me, they all came running over to me, or actually swimming over to me. I wasn't sure exactly what they wanted, but it didn't take long to know what they were after. What they were looking for is a handout. It's recommended that you don't feed any of the birds, whether it be swans or ducks, because they should know how to survive in the wild. But sometimes it's just too hard to resist. As we say goodbye to the swans, let's go over to where those two women were. It's the site of an old victory garden. What mostly grows now is sunflowers. Now remember that woman on the bridge who asked about the yellow finch? Well, I know they like sunflower seeds. These three women are either running away from the police 
or just out for a jog. I think they're just out for a jog. Well, if we leave the bridge area and go through this dark and scary tunnel, you'll come to a path. Now this path leads us to the woods. If you go down this path, you'll meet other paths that crisscross. I don't think you have to worry about being lost because you will soon come to someplace familiar. It's pretty hilly out here. If we look to the left, we can look down quite a ways, but just don't look if you're afraid of heights. The only thing you have to worry about is maybe tripping over a rock and, oops, falling down and hurting yourself. Now, f up ahead we see a open area. That is the Wuben Golf Course. Hey, nice shot, kid. And another, oh, not so nice shot. He doesn't like it. Oh, well, coach, what do we do now? And this nice, easy shot to win the Masters, and he pushes it wide right. Well, we continue left down to the fifth tee, and this will bring us back to the Wuben Parkway. We can go down the parkway or maybe take another path and we will find a big blue rock. I think a place with big blue birds should have a big blue rock. This was left by glaciers thousands of years ago. It doesn't resemble any rock in the area. That's why it was presumed that it was just dropped by a glacier. Now I have never seen a moth tent up this close before. There are dozens and dozens of caterpillars squirming around, which will soon turn into moths. About a week later, I came by, and this tent was empty. We come full circle back to the causeway, and I spotted a black crown night heron. Now, he's called a night heron because he does most of his feeding at night. During the daytime, he'll probably lounge around on a log like this. Now, if you see the timeline, it's pretty accurate. He stayed in this log for over an hour, but I was very patient. This will give you a good idea of where I was standing at the time. All I did was turn the camera up the road. He looked like he was about to do something, so I zoomed in. But there's a false alarm. Look how he's standing on one leg. Now he just switches from one leg to the other. So I've been doing a lot of filming in this area. So it's just, oh, everything's great. Look at him. And now it's finally moving. I've been here right half an hour. I'm trying to think how long should I stay. You know? Yeah. So I turn it on and I, th and I shut it off. And he sees to do something, turn it back on again. I got tired of waiting for him to do something. So I got closer, crawled through some bushes on my hands and knees, and I got some pretty good close-ups. Well, this concludes our visit with the night heron. We go up the trail in where some sand pits used to be. It's now a small pine forest. You can think of this area as Woburn Bayou Country.
We'll use this map to get our bearings. On the left hand side is where the dam and the power station are. This is the lagoon and the causeway which separates the lagoon from the pond. The dark blue line is Fowl Brook with the two smaller ponds on either side of it. The pond in the bottom is where I normally found Steady Eddie, the great blue heron. This is the island. It may be tiny now, but it used to be a lot bigger, say a hundred years ago, big enough to hold buildings. The wooded area is right here with the golf course both above and to the left of that. And the mountain would be found right up in here. This was my first meeting with Steady Eddie. I was so intrigued with him that I went looking for him every day. I just love the way he kept his head so still as he moved. Then I realized what he was really doing. This out looking for some fish. Now he soon flew away, but I came back the next night, and there he was. Now it was just about sunset, and when you looked at Eddie, the light reflecting off the water made him look brown. But then I noticed the marking on his shoulder, and that's Eddie. These next few scenes were the closest that I got to Eddie. Usually, if you came up to him, he would just fly away. This is also the last time I saw him in this pool. I do have a hunch I know why that is so, which I'll tell you later. If you're minding your own business, usually Eddie doesn't mind. It seems only when he thinks you're staring at him or trying to get too close, he'll just fly away. Yeah, 
Even some people walking by close. He doesn't move. Here he is back in his favorite spot, his little island on the pond. As the sun sets over the pond, there's no reason to pack up your fishing gear. All you need is a bright moon. Now right here it is actually darker than it appears on the screen. The bright moon is all the light they're using. We're going to do a little stop action. If you look in the front, you can actually see a fish bobbing his head and probably laughing at all those fishing.
This is Fast Freddy. He's much harder to find than Steady Eddie because he covers such a wide area. In fact, these are the only shots I have of him. He likes open water areas. Right here, he's walking right down by Arlington Road with people walking by and cars speeding by. Right here, you'll see a marking on his left shoulder. I don't know if it's an injury because Steady Eddie has a similar type marking. You'll never confuse the two birds. Fast Freddy likes the open water, where Steady Eddie prefers a secluded spot. I believe Freddy here is a blue heron where Steady Eddie is a great blue heron. Now, you'll never see Steady Eddie run this fast. Here's an example how Steady Eddie got his name. Notice how still his head stays as he slowly sneaks upon his prey. Also notice, many times, he really is walking on his knees. I was getting tired following this guy around. He never stops. One thing similar between the two birds is the S shape that they are able to crane their necks into. Ever hear the joke about what chairs would look like if our knees bent the other way? Well, most wading birds have knees that bend forward. Here's Freddy out of the water taking a stroll along the beach. This will end our one visit with Freddy. Not much happening on this side, so he flies over to the other side. If you look at the trees in the background, you'll notice that this is not August. This was one of the scenes that I filmed in October. In 1967, the Woburn Conservation Commission acquired 105 acres of the Fowl Brook watershed area. This map dates from that time and shows an exercise trail which was set up in the conservation area. If you look on the left-hand side of the map where it says marsh, this is now a pond where the Great Blue Heron Steady Eddy resides. And further to the left are community gardens, which are mostly now sunflowers. Here are a few of the exercise stops. I never saw anyone using them. I guess they're just relics of the past. This is the spot where I got those good close-ups of Steady Eddie. Remember, I told you he didn't want to return here. I'll tell you why. Now, this is the pond where we see Steady Eddie a lot of times. Now, the reason being is the sewer truck. There's a sewer line which runs the whole length of that path, which goes from the fire bridges all the way down to the pond. In order to get the truck down here, they had to cut down a lot of the vegetation. Steady Eddie likes some seclusion, and it was too open for him, so 
I don't think he wanted to come back here. What this truck here is doing is cleaning the sewer line out. They told me it got all clogged up. Let's spend a few minutes with some cormorants around the lagoon in the small pond area. I came by the same time the next morning and there he was again, drying his wings off. I came early one morning and played a guessing game. Where was this cormorant going to surface? Don't look now, Mr. Comorant, but here comes Steady Eddie, coming to see what you're up to. There must be something good over here. Now watch how good of a fisherman Steady Eddie is. These three fish were caught in the span of about five minutes.
On the last day of my shoot, I finally got a good shot of Eddie in flight. I would like to give a plug to an organization called the Wuben Residence Environmental Network, better known as REN. Check them out at their website, goren.org. They not only work around Horn Pond, but places like Shaker Glen and Forest Park. You can help them out at a spring cleanup, or maybe go on a bird watch. There are not only local birds you can find, but many migratory birds make a stop in Wuben. Some of the creatures I went looking for were owls, green herons, and snapping turtles. I guess they were all camera shy this week. Some people have even spotted some foxes roaming around. Now I've never known crows to be that interesting, but watch what this guy does. No wonder there's no bark left on any of these trees. Yeah, just so he can sharpen his beak. You'll find plenty of hawks roaming around these woods. This scene was done by accident. That's me walking across the bridge. Little did I know the swans were underneath.
At first, I thought they had trouble getting under this pile of wood. But then I realized they were intimidated by me standing right on top of them. So what I did, I moved off to the side and they did their own make way for ducklings, swan style. Just because it's cold out and there's snow on the ground doesn't mean you can't enjoy the pond. Here are some scenes from the first weekend in February of 2005. After we watch this family do some cross-country skiing, I will finish off the program with the annual ice fishing contest.